Hey, how's it going? And welcome today to Outdoor Adventures with Keys. Now, today we're breaking down the slide baiting rig. I've had a whole lot of messages, had a whole lot of people come into the store, catch up with us, um, people on the, the YouTube channel asking about this rig, why it's so successful, why we're using it, um, and I'm going to attempt to break down this rig as much. So starting from the top, um, the gear that you're using, obviously the rod and reel has to be suited to, to fishing for bigger fish. It's nothing worse than being under gun and going after a big fish, actually hooking that big fish, knowing that you're not going to really be able to fight so, him. Be mindful of that and, uh, you know, where possible, get into some gear that you know is going to give you a good opportunity to catch this fish. So, um, get uh, reels with heavy drag, um, good line capacity are, are a good way to go with, with this uh, method of fishing. And, um, you, you typically want uh, a rod that's, for land base, I, I, I use an eight foot rod. Uh, reason being, it's, it's tall enough off the rocks for leverage when I need it, but it's also um, short enough that when I need to really turn the head of the fish, I'm able to do so, and I find eight foot would be really, really good for me doing those sorts of things. So, um, you know, have a look into that as well. Now, from the top, we're using, as our main line, I really recommend Furla. Now, it's, it's South African made, good quality, High abrasion resistance and uh, it's tough as so get into some purline, check it out. Uh, really, uh, yeah, the reason why I recommend using mono is because uh, A, you can have an abrasion resistance and if you're fishing off the rocks, it's definitely so sliding your uh, rig down. Uh, I have heard of instances where people have been in trouble because they're using the rig uh, when it hits their, their leader, um, also the slow rubbing of that rig. Uh, not a major, and I do know people that prefer to use braid when using this method, and, and they do okay. So just just have a think about that before you get into it. Um, but I prefer personally using mono as my main one um, to stop it really down. Next part of the rig is this bead. So uh, the beads that I, I, I'm using and the, the beads that I do um, recommend for this type of fishing are the squishy rubbery type beads. Now, um, Basically, you want the, the eye of the swivel to be able to stop on it. If it's going to go straight over the top, it's pointless. If it's um, going to hit it and, it and it's too hard, the, the reason why I use a squishy bead, if, if that swivel hits this bead and it's too hard, A, the bead can either break, B, you're going to get into trouble with things like it's going to catch a knot. Um, and, and you really get the benefits of when that hit swivel hits that, that bead, um, it does act as a bit of an absorber to the kingfisher's head shakes, all of those sorts of things. So a squishy bead is a good, good thing indeed, so get into that. Um, then we come down to our game swivel. So with the, uh, the swivel that I like to use, I like to use something that at the end of my rig, because uh, potentially this could be the bottom of the rig, and we'll get to that in a second now. At the end of my rig I want something very strong, Personally, game swivels are the way to go for me. Um, coming down here, our line to our sinker. So, on the end of this is a breakaway sinker. Something along those lines. Um, basically, something that is going to hold the bottom really well and even get snagged for me because I do like to make sure that that thing is nice and firm so that I can get my line home. So, Breakaway sinkers are, are definitely what I'm using and, and getting, getting my results um, from it. So have a look into that. Surf casting, exactly the same. Um, same thing. Don't worry about the cover of the line. I'm using red line so that you can see it on the video. But um, the line from my swivel to my sinker is generally um, lighter than my main one. Reason being is that I run a sacrificial weight system. So that if I snag up and the fish hooks up, I can easily by, by putting some weight on that, that line, bust off this line here and still fight the fish, resume fighting that fish, which is for me that's the priority. If you want to prioritize going home with a sinker in your tackle box, that's cool, but I like to make sure that if I hook a fish, I've got a shot at catching them and, and for me sacrificial weights, especially around foul ground is a really, really good one to go. Um, on, on the sand, however, I, I change up my method a little bit and I will use um, I'll go the opposite. 
thicker line so that when it's lodging in the sand, it's going to stay nice and straight, nice and stiff. The live bait hits the bottom of the ring, that clip is the swivel, he's going to be able to do nice big circles around it at methods under different situations and circumstances. Remember, when you're fishing over the sand as well, um, you don't have to have this thick line. You don't have to have um, the sacrificial bait. You don't have to have all sorts of the reasons why the fishing over blocks can, can be eliminated in the fishing. So hooks and, uh, on that. Um, personally I'm using one of the two um, styles of hooks. I like using the Tropa live bait hooks um, and the mustard ribbons. And, um, you'll, you'll find with, with my particular type of fishing I, I like to use a J hook for my live baiting. Um, in this system that is because when I'm trying to set that hook I'm putting quite a lot of uh, tension on the rod. I'm really cranking on the rod to make sure that that hook gets into the kingfish as much as possible. And I find J-hooks are the best way to go for that. So um, if, I'm, if I'm using a, a jack mackerel bait, I'll, I'll come down to a size seven uh, mustard hook. If I'm using a big kawai, then you're looking at around the 10 bar. Um, and that's, that's so that I'm matching the size of the fish it's going to mean that fish can swim longer um, and hold a lot more of its health, but it also means that um, when the kingy comes and eats it, the size of the hook is a certain proportion to the size of the livey, and you can get more success stroking that thing. So I do recommend having a few sizes um, in your tackle box, a few different hooks. Sizes. All right, so now we're going to go to the part of the up the rig. So first of all, you point the clip towards the ocean towards the sea, um, wherever you're going to be deploying it, that needs to be facing that way. And so that sort of end of it is looking towards the water. Um, basically, you're going to be slotting it over the line like so. And then from the back, pulling the line over the top of that little loop on the, on the clip here. And then that's ready to go. That's so again, doing it in a uh, close-up view. Clipping it over, facing the swivel to wherever you're going to be deploying it, the water obviously, going around the back of the swivel and pulling the line over this metal loop here. Now that is free to run. So where the, I suppose, benefit comes into a non-return um, clip, that can slide down nice and free, unhindered, but um, the minute the, the live bait starts to do an arc or, or turn around a little bit more of an angle that there begins to pinch the line and as you can see that's not going nowhere and that's without weight on it without a fish on it um, that does not want to move and then bam goes straight back the other way so that's where this clip really comes into its own um, and gives you the opportunity to deploy multiple baits uh, you can aim your live bait wherever you want it to go uh, if you're on a small rock ledge you don't have to just fish the one living up you can aim them to different areas, covering different depths, um, and fishing them in the whitewash if that's there. Uh, if you know there's a channel nearby, aiming one towards the channel. Uh, quite often, we've gone to the beach, river mouth right there, aiming them right where the sea and the, the water kind of do a bit more of the, uh, the mixing up. So yeah, you you get a lot more accuracy with where you're putting your liveys, and that's why this is such an effective rig. So. Uh, Get online, check us out, the website's below, um, or come in and see us here at the shop. 39A Nielsen Street, Onehunga. Yeah, get in touch with us and we'll get you on to the clips that will put you on the fish.